Hi. Hi, good evening. Good evening, how are you? Hi, teacher. Hi, Fatima. Hi, teacher. Hi, Eric. Hi, Miguel. Hi, Jonathan, Roxana, Efraín, Lydia. Hi. Armando, Joseph, and Hi, Daisy. Teacher. Good evening. How's everybody today? How was Hi, teacher. Hi. How was everybody's day? Was it okay? Was it a good day? Yeah? Happy. Yeah. Thanks, God. Okay. All Thank right. You. That's nice. Very good. All right, guys. So let's begin here. Yesterday, remember that while well, the two past days we've been talking about the order of adjectives and everything, we're not going to go uh, doing anything else anymore. But I said that we're we were going to go over the last worksheet of yesterday's class. So that's what we're going to do right now. And then I'm going to take you to the platform so we can begin the new topic. After that, um, we're gonna come back here without the video of the platform and I'm gonna show you a PPT and then if we have time, we're gonna do some exercises, okay? So that's pretty much the plan for tonight's session. So let's get started then. So let's see here, I'm gonna share with you. We had two worksheets. Were you able to finish the, oops, that's the key. Were you able to finish this one? This is the one I wanted to go over, right? We didn't go over this one, did we? Guys, did we go over this one yesterday? No? I think not. Okay, very good. All right, so I'm just gonna make it here. Um, not that big, but anyway, um, here guys, if of course you can see it. Um, remember that we're talking about the order of adjectives. When we talk about um, opinion <laughs> adjectives, what does it say here on the worksheet that you guys had yesterday? Can you read it for us? Eddie? Yes. Um, opinion. Uh -huh. yeah. Can you read what it says under opinions? Okay. A subjective attitude to someone or something. Right. For example, nice or perfect. Very good. Thank you. Joseph, can you read the second one where it says size? Size. To estimate the dimension. Uh -huh. Dimension of the object, of an object or a person. Very good. Thank you. Uh, it's large. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, large, huge, and? Huge, narrow. Very good. Thank you, Joseph. Efrain, can you read shape? Okay, shape. To make out any forms, an object can, can have example, round, triangular. Triangular. Very good. Next one. Who else is after that? Lydia, hi. Can you read? Um, H. Okay. To convey how all to convey, something to convey. conveys how how all something or someone is. Example: antique, antique, yes, antique, antique yes. yeah, young, young two year yeah. old, two year old. Very nice. All right. Color. Roxana, can you read color, please? Roxana, are you there? Or Daisy or Armando, either one. Thank you, Daisy. Can you read origin? I mean, color, color, color. That's color. The one. Yeah. Okay. Color to describe any colors or things or things. Yes. An object can have example: gray, silver, beige. Excellent. Very nice. Roxana, are you there so you can read origin? Or Armando, anybody there? No. Oh, there it is. Roxana. Uh, yes. Sure. Thank you. Roxana. Um, Armando, you read material, please. Okay. The origin to show the country and object person comes from IG, French, English, Italian. Very good. Material, Armando? To express uh -huh. materials, an object, an object can be made of. Very Example, good. Wooden, wood, yes. Wooden, zinc, and gold. Woolen, right, very nice. And the last one, Ellie, do you mind reading uh, purpose? Ellie, can you read? I don't know if Ellie is busy right now. Anyway, um, oh, okay. Ellie? Okay. Hi, All can right. you read purpose? That's okay. Can you read uh, purpose, Ellie? Purpose to define one, to define what an object is used for ENG. Example, uh huh. Dining, hotel, swimming. That's right. Dining, hotel, and 
And thank you. All right. So this is just to remind us what each category is talking about or with what we should be like looking for, all right? Then we had this one to put the adjective in the correct order. Did you guys finish it yesterday with your groups or by yourself after? Were you able to do it? We finished. You finished? All yeah. right, okay. So what we're going to do, I'm just gonna show you the, um, the um, answers here. All right, so I'm just gonna read it over and then you guys, if you have the worksheet with you close to you, or if you have it like with you, then you can check your answers. Number one, it said, I wanted to buy a big round blue Italian dining table. All right, so make sure that that's the, the pattern you should follow. Then we have, does Miriam need tall, small, square, wooden chair? All right, so that's, that's what it should be like. Number three, what is this triangular red leather thing? All right. Did you notice the brand of that splendid, a streamlined green sport car? Number five, William can take care of your naughty wide Persian cut. All right, six, this long multicolored woolen scarf belongs to my brother. Seven, are you sure this nice curved steel sabre, I guess, is Turkish? I don't know what that is, to be honest. Does anybody know what this is? No, Number seven? Because I don't know how it's pronounced in English. It's a kind of a sword. Ah, oh, it's a sword. Yeah. Oh, like, a, okay, I get it. Oh, cool. I learned something new today. <laughs> All right. Press the. Is it a sitar? I don't know. Similar, but less curved. Ah. It's a thinner edge, too. Oh, mm. cool. Interesting. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> All right. Press this round bottom, uh, bottom never. All right, number nine, Mike will order a nice light English breakfast. 10, this amazing elegantly shaped brown wooden wardrobe is my friend's gift, all right? So this is how they should look like, guys. If you ask me, do you really, I mean, I mean do people really in English use all these adjectives? Well, if there is an order, that's why, I mean, it's because people use them, all right? Maybe not all of them, and maybe not as many as like in some of these sentences, but you do, all right? And if you guys ever take like a TOEFL test, for example, questions like this, they would probably, like you would probably encounter them, right? So like they would try to trick you on the order of your adjectives. So that's why you need to know how they are like organized, okay? Then here guys, in case you have it close to you, we're just gonna go over this one. Do you want this red sport bike? That was correct, okay? The number two, he wore long Italian old coat. It is wrong because of the Italian thing, all right? Number three, will you buy me a small pink hat? That is correct, the same as number four. Number five, it says it's incorrect, okay? Why is number five incorrect, guys? Don't touch that green square box. Why? Or shape. That's right, that's right, very good. Number six, seven, and eight, they're all correct. Number nine, it says it's not correct. Why isn't it correct, guys? This wooden gray scarf suits you. Materials and colors. That's right, so it has to switch, right? The order has to switch and I choose a nice green modern tint. All right, so is that correct? It says it's not. Why it's incorrect, it? incorrect. H and color. That's something. right, very good. <laughs> All right, so here we have the rest of the sentences, but we're not gonna go over them because you guys should know about it. If you, I don't know if you wanna take a picture of this so you guys can have the answers and then you can compare by yourselves. Okay, yes, please. All right. So that would be exercise three from the worksheet yesterday. Finish taking the picture. Okay. All right, then we have the other, were you able to take it, guys? Yeah? Here, it's just the examples of 
uh, the adjectives uh, in the correct groups. That's like if you want to take a picture of this also. Opinion, beautiful, lovely. Size, enormous, tiny, short, and high. The same thing for shape, color, origin, and material. I think, and there's the purpose one. Got it, guys? Did you get it? Yes? Excellent. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. So I think um uh, I think that's enough for the um, for the practices of um, adjective orders. Okay, of course I do invite you guys to keep on practicing them. There's a lot of information on the web. All right, so just don't stick with this. I mean, there's a lot more. All right, but I my job is to give you a little bit more of what it is on the platform, but it also relates to the platform. But it's Know more about it and to find out more about these topics and all the other topics that we teach you here all right so with that in mind we're gonna go on with the second activity I told you I had for you which is the platform we're gonna go to the the platform right now to listen to a part of the video and then we're coming back and then I'll show you uh, a PPT related to the same topic okay so here we have let me just get it here all right. Whoops. Oh, there. I can't find it. Hold on back. It's here. There it is. Okay. I'm just going to make it a little less big here. All right, so this is from the platform, and this is what we're learning here on the platform. All right, so I'm going to share the audio with you guys. All right, so here. We will learn today about how some adverb clauses of time can be changed to modify phrases, but only when the subject of the adverb clause and the main clause are the same. If you use time expressions like right before, before, right after, after, and while, the time clauses can be reduced. All right, so right now, guys, what we're talking about is reduced time clauses, okay? That's the topic of today's um, class, all right? Reduced time clauses, and we're like working with a specific uh, words here or adverbs all right of time okay so they are the ones that can be changed and I'll tell you how all right let's study the following sentences after I finish my work I head to the office after finishing my work I head to the office notice how on the second sentence we omit the subject and change the verb finish to present participle all right here Vero, can you read the first sentence where I say after, after I, Vero? After I finish my, home, my work, I head to the office. All right, Vero, can you read the other example, please? After finishing my work, I head to the office. All right, very good. So, guys, what is the big thing that happens in, from one sentence to the next? What's happening there? Anybody? You change the verb. All right, I changed the verb. Very good. What else happened? The subject is skipped. Yeah, the subject is omitted. We're not using the subject on the second sentence. All right. The rest of it, is it okay? I mean, the rest of it, is it the same? After the comma, is it the same? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So when we talk about reduced time clauses, it's not that we make a huge reduction. But there is something, it's called a reduction because we are omitting something, okay? In this case, we're omitting the subject. Now, this only happens when the subject is the same doer for both sentences, okay? If I would have, after I finish my work, she heads to the office, then you cannot make a reduction on time clauses. Do you get that point, guys? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, I'm right. going to ask you about that. Right. Uh -huh. Thank you. 
Yeah, very good, okay? So these changes or these uh, reduction only, only happens, and I'm underlining only, when the, when the same subject is acting in both sentences. Okay. Cannot happen if you have two subjects, all right? Like I and he, or my mother and my father, or he and his boss is a different person, all right? It has to be the same for you to be able to reduce the time clauses. Now, you don't, you're not actually able to reduce it even if you're using the same subject with all the adverbs of time, all right? Only with certain ones, all right? Here, as uh, this is mentioned previously, I want to go back here. After finishing yes. my... Tell me, yes? Uh, could you... Uh, give us another example. Yeah, of course. Yeah, just give me a second. I'm gonna give you the example. I'll just, I just wanna go back here, here. Time classes right? can be here. With these words in particular, or these adverbs, this is when change can happen. So you have two ways, or two, let's say two reasons, or two um, ways that you're allowed to make the reduction. If you don't have these two steps, better said. If you don't have these two steps, you cannot make a reduction. One of them being, you have to use one of these little words, either right before, right after, after, before, while, since. all right? Also since, all right? And a couple of more. And that's why it's important, guys, for you to like dig in topics because not everything is given here, all right? But we're, we try to give you the most of it. And then with the teacher, like teaching you, I try to give you a little bit more, but in an hour, it's impossible to give you everything. So that's why I said that your job is to keep on digging on topics, okay? Now, uh, we're gonna go on. So make sure that you remember these words, right after, right before, before, after, and, and a couple of more that we're gonna see after Be reduced. That. All right. Let us study the following After sentences. Example, After I finish my work, I head to the office. Let's just finish watching. After finishing my work, I head to the office. Notice how on the second sentence we omit the subject and change the verb finish to present participle, finishing. Remember the present participle always ends in ing. This is another example using while. While I take my lunch break at work, I often sneak a five-minute nap. It can be changed to, while taking my lunch break at work, I often sneak a five-minute nap. All right, here, this is another example, and I'm going to give you more on the PPT I have for you here. Here, they are using while, all right? First, the first step to check is, okay, are they using one of these words that I'm allowed to reduce here? Yes, while. Are they using the same subject for both sentences or for both Yes, I on the first one, I on the second one. So if I like get those two points or those two steps, I am allowed to make a reduction, all right? So instead of saying I, I will omit I. Instead of saying take, I will switch it to taking, all right? And now the meaning is exactly the same, all right? Can you use this often? Yes. Do I have to? No, but it sounds more fluent. It sounds more native. And the purpose is for you to get to the point, all right? So instead of saying, well, I take my lunch break at, at work, I often sneak at a five minute nap. You can say, well, I'm, while taking my lunch break at work, I often sneak a five minute nap, all right? So it sounds a little bit better or a little bit more fluent, all right? But you have to have those two requirements. The, the, the little adverb word thing and that they are speaking object. So I'm not gonna keep on watching this because you can do that by yourselves. I'm gonna take you now with the uh, PPT I have for you where I'm gonna show you more examples. All right, is that okay, guys? Yes? yes. Perfect. All right. Just give me a second here, guys. I thought I had it open.
Okay. Okay, so um, also it's very important for you to know on the platform is we said reduce time cost. It's the same thing, all right? It's the same structure and everything, but they call it in a different way, but it's the same pattern, it's the same topic. Reduction of adverb clauses, which are time clauses, to modify, modifying adverbial phrases, all right? So don't worry so much about the fancy name. What I want you to understand is that this is a time clause because you use those little time words, which they are adverbs. And why are they adverb clauses? Because you use an adverb and they are like fragments of a sentence. That's why they are called clauses, all right? So the fanciness, it's okay, but you, it's there. It's the same thing. Efrain, do you mind reading this for me, please? Some adverb clauses. Okay. Some adverb clauses may also be hanged to modifying phrases and the ways in which the change are made are the same. All right, okay, so they change, they modify phrases. So here we have, um, who wants to read this? One of the girls, can you read girls? Only Me. one, thank you. <laughs> Which one? And with some other clauses, that round shape one. Okay. Some other clauses may, may also be changed to modify phrases and the ways in which the change are made are made are the same. Continue with the first one, omit the subject. Okay. Omit the subject of the depend clause and be the form of the verb. And the be form of the verb, aha, uh -huh. continue. If there is not be form of a verb, omit the subject and change the verb to ing. All right, okay, thank you here, let's continue. Uh, another person to read this, please. Other clothes. Uh-huh. Other close. When I was walking to class, I ran into an old friend. All right. Let's stop that right there. We have, what is the adverb uh, word, guys, for that first sentence? What is the adverb they're using? While. While, thank you. While yeah. I was walking to class, I ran into an old friend. Which is the subject? I. Is it use, are they using the same subject for the both yes. clauses? Yes. yes, all right. Very good. So with that in mind, if I keep on reading, uh -huh. phrase, okay. so you modify the phrase or phrase, mo phrase modifying to what, Efrain? Phrase modifying. While walking to class, I am into an old friend. That's right. So the, the other clause, the original one is while I was walking to class, comma, I ran into an old friend. You yeah, phrase modify it. it. You That's omitted right. That. You mm -hmm. omitted I, the first I, and then you add ing, all right? So you say right, while right, walking right. to class, I ran into an yes. old friend. If you notice yeah. on the first sentence, guys, it's, 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 I was walking verb being simple past but according to a rule here is you also omit the subject and the be form of the verb so you have to omit those two in the case that there are not be verb that in, there's not a be form of a verb then you would have to omit only the subject and change the verb to ing so there are some rules that you need to follow here okay and this is the, a great example here while i was walking it changes to while walking. You omitted not only the subject, but you also omitted the verb be in simple past. And you, and you were left out with only walking. Do you see that change happening, guys? Yes? Yeah, and always we had to change. That's right. If you're, yeah, because that's the, that's the idea of the reduction thing. All right? Or you may leave it the way it is, but then you're not reducing anything. All right, but the idea here is to show you that it, it, you're going to change it and this is how you're going to change it. Yeah? Okay. All right, very good. Next one. Who wants to read the other one? Volunteers. Lydia, Daisy, yes. Eli, Armando. Yes, you may. Thank you. Okay. While I was sitting in class, I fell asleep. Aha. Uh -huh. And the another, um, the one that is the one that is down while sitting. 
while what? sitting in class the one it, the, the one that is underneath okay while sitting in class i fell asleep all right okay so can you tell me what what were the changes and what were the reductions happening in that one and the subject yeah and the but to be in the past, past. right yes okay very good and then you were left out with i while sitting in class i felt asleep the second part of your sentence or the clause the other one doesn't change anything the one that changes is the first one very good can you keep on reading the second example please may yes you may thank you Lydia. okay while Anne was sitting in class she felt this eye sleep. All right. And another is while sitting in class and fell asleep. All right. Thank you, Lydia. Now, can you tell me, Lydia, what were the changes to make the reduction? Uh, you, uh, you delay the and. You omitted and. And, you uh -huh. put, and, uh, and was. Also. All right. Now, notice that. But in the second, uh -huh. in the second sentence, you right. put the name. Right. You could, yeah, that, that's the change, or you could have left it with she. All right. Now, what I want you to pay attention to is that it, these uh, reductions not only happen with I, but with whatever subject you're talking about, as long as for both sentences, you are using the same subject or person or noun, all right? So in this case, it says, while Anne, Anne is a she. While Anne was sitting in class, she felt asleep, all right? So we're using Anne, which is the same as saying she or vice versa. If we would have said, while I was sitting in class, she felt asleep, we cannot make the reduction, all right? It has to be the same subject or the, using the same noun in that case, or pronoun. You understand that? Guys? Yes, teacher. All right, very good. I do, because no, everybody's responding. All right, who wants to read this one, please? An adverb clause. Do that. <coughs> hola, hola, uh -huh. someone else? Yes, you may, thank you. An adverb clause can be changed to a modifying phrase only when the subject of the advert, advert clause and the subject of the main clause are the same. Exactly, this is what we've been saying all along, all right? You can reduce it or you can modify it, you can change it, all right? Only when the subject of the adverb clause, which is the beginning one, the beginning part of the sentence, and the subject of the main clause is yeah. the same. If it's not the same, you cannot make the change. Do you guys get that? Yes? Yes. All right, no change possible. Who wants to read this one? Someone that has not read or participated yet. Hey, teacher. Thank you. No change possible. Uh, while the teacher was lecturing to the class, I felt asleep. Mm -hmm. The second one, please. While we were walking home, a frog hopped across the road in front of us. Thank you. All right, Jonathan, on the first sentence, while the teacher was lecturing to class, I felt asleep. Can you make the change? Can you make the reduction? No, I think not, because first he's talking about the teacher and then about her, his, herself. Right, like about I, right, in that case, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right. So the teacher could be a he or could be a she, all right? Mm -hmm. And then the second part is talking about me in this case. I fell asleep, all right? So you cannot mm -hmm. make the reduction because it's not the same subject, right? Thank you. All right, let's see. Miguel Angel, what about the second one? While we were walking home, a frog hopped across the road in front of us. Can you make the reduction? No, because and to begin with, if the reduction was made, it not like the frog was walking home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, we're talking about we on the first part of the sentence or the first um, clause, and then about a frog on the second part. And we're not a frog, and we the frog is not us. So you cannot make a reduction. All right. 
Guys, okay with that? Do you have questions about it? No questions? No. Okay, let's continue here. All right, changing time clauses to modify and adverbial phrases, okay? So you can use after, before, since, while, uh, the ones the before, um, the other ones that we had on the platform plus this ones, all right? Here we're um, also saying since. If you notice, there, there should be like some more. Can be changed to modify final adverbial phrases. For example, phrases or the phrase, it says since coming to this country, Maria has made many friends. You're using since. In this case, you're not using, I guess you were not using the verb be, or maybe you were, but if the verb is with ing, all right, you're talking about Maria. You were talking about Maria in both um, times or in both clauses. So say, say, since Maria came to this country, she has made many friends. So here, guys, this is the original sentence. Since Maria came to this country, she has made she has made many friends. We're talking about Maria in both cases. We're talking about a she, all right, Maria or she. In that original sentence, we're not using the verb be. According to the rule, if you're not using the verb be, that means that you cannot not omit it because there it doesn't exist. And then you have to switch the verb come to coming. Yeah, so that's why it's a change that you see right there, all right? Expressing the idea of during the same time in modifying phrase and modifying adverbial phrases. Sometimes while, while is omitted, but the ing phrases at the beginning of the sentence give the same meaning. And this is gonna take you a little bit further to what the explanation on the platform is. Here it's saying, sometimes you can even omit while, so the reduction is greater, all right? Because on the other sentences, we were not omitting while, we were just omitting the verb be if it was there and the subject. But now they are telling us that we can also omit while because the ing phrase of, at the beginning of the sentence gives you the same meaning. And we're going to see the uh, example. It's meaning during the same time all right so here we have it while i was walking down the street i ran into an old friend so you changed it to while walking down the street i ran into an old friend Hasta ahí vamos. all right but now they're telling us that we can even omit while so we make a more like an, a greater reduction okay so it says walking down the street i ran into an old friend all right, so you see that it's taking you a step by step. Oh, the first one is the original one, let's say. Then we make the first reduction, and then we make a reduction over the reduction. Yeah? So, to teach you one question. Yes, yes, Efren. So, do they have the same, exactly the same meaning? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Okay. They have exactly the same meaning. All right? Okay. If, for example, Efrain, I know you guys do. If you watch movies or sitcoms or whatever, usually they even make it greater, like the, a reduction over the reduction because they speak so fast, all right? Yeah. We tend to use the first one. While I was walking down the street, all right, I ran yeah. into an old friend, all right? But when they're like super native or whatever and they're talking like those fast and furious movies, I cannot see those guys talking properly. All right, like while I was walk, uh, while I was driving, <laughs> all right, so they yeah, speak yeah. really fast. So usually they would do the third one, Efrain, but it's the same. The sure they can. The yeah. sure they can, yeah, right? Sure right. way. Right. Okay. So, Thank you. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's properly used. It's okay. All right. And it okay. gives you the same meaning. All right. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, we can say uh, the first one is, is more uh, formal. It's more non-native perhaps oh, okay. more formal sure more proper yeah i guess more than formal is proper it's a structure the, the way that we were taught to speak or right? can, can, yeah. we, can, can, can we say it's also <laughs> a shortcut which one i i i don't wanna i don't wanna say a long phrase 
Yeah, yeah, that... totally a shortcut. Yeah, of course. It saves time. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, let's, let's keep on seeing this. Now, this is the explanation, guys, of using while or omitting while, all right? You can omit it because the ing verb takes the same meaning of while, so we can omit it with while, all right? Now, here it because. says, express. yes? And this exception is only with while, or we can do it with the others? Ah, we're getting to that, Fatima. Thank you. Right now, okay. we're going to go with because. Not all of them, Fatima. All right? Okay. But with uh, the ones that are here, that's what you can do. All right? Thank you, Fatima. Expressing cause and effect in modifying adverbial phrases. Often, an ing phrases at the beginning of a sentence gives the meaning of because. All right, so let's see it here. It says, because she needed some money to buy a book, Sue cashed a check. All right, look at the example. Needing, we omitted because, we omitted she, and we changed it to the ing form. Needing some money to buy a book, Sue cashed a check. You know when these things also happen in poetry? or in like in books that are written, all right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to repeat because, because, because it takes the beauty away of the language, all right? So here's just needing some money to buy a book. She went, blah, blah, blah. I can even picture a storybook of my children that I read. So yeah, it's more like in stories, more like in, in poems, more like in, I don't know, maybe essays even, all right? Let's see the other example. Because he lacked the, necess the necessary qualification qualifications he was not considered for the job lacking the necessary qualifications he was not considered for the job all right so it gives you the same meaning going back to Ephraim's question all right is it the same meaning yes it is all right okay, okay. yeah all right but I mean with the first with the first one uh, we could have like be okay with it all right but now they're telling us that we can go a little bit further and then we can make it a little bit more i don't know not complicated but more like how we use like we would speak all right also another one here having plus past participle gives the meaning not only of because but also of before Having seen that movie before, I don't want to do it again, or I don't want to go again. Sorry, I don't want to go again, all right? Because you already saw it. Why do you want to go see it again, all right? So here we have another one. Uh, let's see. Someone to read this, please, a form of B. Okay, me? Okay. A form of B in the other clause may be changed to being. The use of being makes the cause and effect relationship clear. F, F, G, yeah, continue. Uh -huh. G F, G. and H have the same meaning. <laughs> okay, let's look at F, it. Uh -huh. Because, because uh, she was unable to afford a car, she bought a bicycle. Mm -hmm. G, being unable to afford a car, she bought a bicycle. H, unable to afford a car, she bought a bicycle. And they have this exact same meaning here. All right, the, the same meaning, okay. yeah. meaning. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Using a pawn plus ing in modifying adverb. Someone else to read it, or if not, Efrain can read. Doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Okay, may I whistle? I think Miguel is gonna read. Miguel, do you okay. wanna read? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Efrain. You're so nice. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Modifying adverbial phrases beginning with the pawn plus ing usually have the same meaning as our adverb classes introduced by when mm -hmm. A and B have the same meaning. Mm -hmm. A, upon reaching the age of 21, I received my inheritance. I received, yes, I received my inheritance. Mm -hmm. When reaching the age of 21, I received my inheritance. That's right. Okay. So here, guys, as I said, you may feel that this is not that the exact topic that is on the platform because it takes you a little bit further than, all right? But I think to your level, I think it's necessary for you to know this. Okay? Excuse me? Yes. Teacher? Yes? The one who sounds a little bit weird to me is 
letter letter no, come on what is it letter b when i reach in can we say yeah. it that way according to when this I <laughs> okay when i reach it it sounds a little bit rare yeah it's a, it, it does but according to this you could all right okay. but then okay. again it's like yeah all right okay. what i want right, honestly <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. All right, and the last one, upon can be shortened to on. This one, it's like, as I said, this is like a little bit further than what, is it, what it is on the platform, but again, I mean, it will help you anyhow. A, B, and C okay. all have the same meaning, and now C is here. On reaching the age of 21, I received my inheritance, all right? So you can also have say the previous one that we were mentioning, and it's the same meaning, all right? Okay, okay. Can you okay. remove the on? I think it's this would be the same. Reaching the age of twenty-one mm -hmm. instead of instead mm -hmm. of on reaching. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, sometimes English is like mathematics. If you guys are good at math, you're gonna be good at English because sometimes it's like taking, you know, removing Elements. and and you know, Elements. yeah, <laughs> removing <laughs> yeah. and putting and adding and at the end is the same result. You're going, so you're other, going about like different ways, but at the end it's the same meaning, all right? <laughs> you have to respect the order. Right, yeah, all right. But pretty much, guys, I mean, what I really wanted you to like understand, for example, is take it, let's take it this far, all right? Like you can even omit while, you could even omit before, I guess, all right? So it gives you that idea, okay? Now, Hey, with it, you understand what we've been talking about? I know I did a lot of talking today, but I needed to like introduce you to this topic. But right now, for let's say the last 10, 12 minutes, I'm gonna send you right now to your groups, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to write examples using the, one, the words that we were talking about after, before, I want one with after, one with before, one with while, and one with since, all right? And I want you to make it like the, the, the proper one or the more structured one, then take, it, then take it to the other reduction, and then let's leave it up to there, all right? Don't, don't remove the while yet, okay? Let's, let's just stick with what's on the platform and stuff. So make the reduction, remove the uh, subject, remove the verb be if you're using it, okay? And then just write or add ing, okay? You understand what you're gonna be doing in your groups, yes? Yeah, guys, yeah, okay. I think so, I think yeah. so. Yeah, okay, so what I want you to do is like, okay, hold on before, if anything, here. What I want you to do is to come up with sentences like this, all right? While I was sitting or while sitting in class or like whatever, you may use the was or you may not, all right? But the, the idea is to make it, to, to make the first reduction, all right? Yes? So what I want to see if I walk into your class, for example, to your room, for example, is I want to see the original sentence. While I was walking to class, I ran into an old friend, and then I want to see the reduction. While walking to class, I ran into an old friend. I write sentences without was or the verb be, just the, the verb, like for example, the one we had here, since Maria, since Maria came to this country, she has made many friends. In this case, they are using Maria twice or she. They are not using the past verb of be. They, they were just using came. So, but you make the change to this, all right? So some sentences without be and some other sentences with be if you want to. But at the end, I want to see your original sentence and then the phrase that you modified it into, yeah? One with uh, before, one with after, one with while, and one with since. So you're making four, but you're making a set of two, right? The original plus the modifying one. So two per uh, adverb. Get it? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to open up the rooms right now.
Eric Joseph, go on to your groups, please.
ask for help. Hey, so hello there. We need help. Hello? Hi, hi. I'm sorry. I'm here. Uh huh. Tell me. Uh, we're, we're struggling with some tense over here. So, uh, hey, you tell. Okay. <laughs> I, my sentence is before my mom cooks, or I have to say before my mom cooked. Like in past. Yeah. Either one. Either one can be. Make before my no, but, mother. But, but ah, the but whole, that one, no, no, no. Yeah. Before my mother cooked. Cooked. Like in simple. No, class. say, say the, the whole. Yeah. Tell her the the whole sentence. Okay. Before my mom cooked, she always takes a bath, or she always took a bath. Ah, wait, wait, wait. Before my mom cooks, you. If you want to leave it on simple present, is the whole the whole tense would be like the whole sentence has to be in the same tense. Before uh -huh. my mom cooks, she always takes a bath. Uh -huh. All right? But if so I before use Before cooking, it, it, before uh -huh. cooking, she takes a bath. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah. yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. All right, guys, we're gonna go back because I need to oh, go. We have minutes. another class, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, bye. 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 All right, guys, so um, it's time to go. I have the other class. Thank you very much for being this whole week with me. So remember that this is the third week. Next week is the last week of the course, all right? So have a nice weekend. Please keep, sa keep safe, and I'll see you Monday. Bye, guys. Good, Good night. night. Thank, Thank you. You too. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 B